Hey folks, welcome back to our Dice Tower Preview. I'm Mark, and today we're taking a look at Aridia, the paths we dare tread. Aridia is brought to you by Far Off Games. It's for one to four players, ages 14 and up, and games run anywhere from 60 to 120 minutes. The paths we dare tread. The words echo in your mind. You blink back sleep as dawn pours into your threadbare tent. Exile isn't nearly as romantic as it sounds. Today is the great thaw. The hunt should start soon. With a little luck, your training will pay off and you'll be home before harvest. Each year, emissaries are dispatched throughout Aridia, distributing useless wooden coins to the local inhabitants. These coins, called squills, hold no value, but they are the only way for the banished to receive a pardon. Exiles must prove their worth Collect the most squeals by harvest and you can return home. And so your adventure begins. Iridia is an open world to explore as you wish. Make your way across the world map, discovering new locations, interacting with memorable characters, fighting vicious monsters, and scavenging long lost treasures. The world pulls you in through detailed descriptions and vivid artwork for each place you visit. Every location is unique, not randomized, and is built piece by piece as you explore. So this game is a cooperative adventure and can be played in any number of sessions and is designed for you to easily save and store the game. Aridia is a big expansive world to explore for sure. There's so much to this game and I'm going to lead you through some of the basics here to give you a feel but what's really nice is that your characters and even all the cards and the different areas that you explore are all part of this like tuck boxes that you'll discover as you explore through the world and so forth. And your characters all have these recessed boards that you can place all your stats and everything and so forth in them and then store them nicely in their own tuck boxes for the next session. One of the nice things that Fire of Games typically does is give you pre-painted miniatures and they've done that here in this. Even in the prototype, they look fantastic. But what's also neat is that they have interchangeable heads so you can kind of customize body to the head, to the character you're trying to create for this game as it's going to stay with you through the course of the adventure. Now you have three main character boards, starting with your main character board where you'll have your character's portrait as well as your character's name, your title, your race and your rank. Now there's all kinds of different ways you can go with creating your character and they're even going to allow you to customize to some degree. So that's pretty neat. But this is also where you'll track all your various skills that you currently have employed that you're using for your character, as well as your stats, things like strength and dex and so forth. Also, there's tokens on this board to use to track various things on your character. And we'll take a look at some of those in a minute. But you can see already you have one on your stat, so once you use it, you would pull it off, things like that. Also, this is where you track your experience to be leveling up through the game. And you have a series of cards for your character. You have your race card, which outlines a bit of what type of character you're playing, giving you some aid in role playing, but it also gives you your starting skill. In the case of the dwarf, he's hardy. So you'll be placing those all out when you first set up your characters and build them out. And it is a process actually, as you build out your character for that first game, actually adding a lot to the gaming experience. On the back side of your race card are stats, and you'll be marking these off as you level up throughout the game, keeping track of what you've spent. Now also you have a path card, and on the path card is kind of your direction you're taking with this character. There's corresponding different types of treasure chests for those paths and so forth. There's also a series of other cards that you'll be tapping into throughout the game, but let's take a look at what the different core things you're gonna be doing as you move through this world. Now, the rest of this that I'm gonna show you is all based on the tutorial. So I'm not really spoiling too much of the story and so forth. The tutorial is actually fantastic to get your feet wet in the game and just learn all the aspects of what you're doing. But this is definitely an adventuring game with some pretty interesting combat as well. But starting out at the world map, you're going to be flipping these tiles as you start off and move through this world. But right away in the tutorial, they have you going to the exile camp because that's where you wake up and you have to do a little bit of training and learn the combat system there, which is really fun. And they've got points of interest and NPCs for you to talk to. But the nice thing is that you'll move your characters all singly with a marker onto the world map and then you're going to be looking at the corresponding area at an exploded view, zoomed in view, so to say. 
and you pull that from, in this case, the big box and you'll read what it says. And then you're going to be flipping it over and moving into the adventure, moving your characters, your miniatures onto that board. And now looking at the exile camp, there's an NPC right away you can talk to and a point of interest to go check out. Now what's cool, when you interact with these environments, there's all these different hotspots like NPCs or a point of interest and you'll be referencing card decks for those, going to find the appropriate NBC or the point of interest or an event or traveling, you know, all here, all very coded so you can find the right card at the right time. And it's very handy, quick to reference and so forth. But in this case, let's take a look at this NPC. I'm going to interact with the NPC, but the player on my left will become that NPC by turning themselves into the guide to guide you through the process giving you tons of role-playing options, which is really fun. Now, there's responses that you're hoping the players ask you as the NPC. You're trying to get them, hopefully, to ask the right questions and get the right information. But they do give you some nice role-playing options for this NPC to respond if they aren't really asking the right question at the right time and so forth. But when they do ask the questions, like in this case, they're looking for squills or the guild or practice dummy, things like that, then you'll flip the card over and you have responses on the back. And you're looking for a specific response, but they can ask multiple questions. You don't have to just have a one and done kind of response from these NPCs. And you're looking for one with the blue kind of reference dot on it, where if they get the players to ask this question, then that gives you as the guide a role playing point, giving you a marker on your board giving you a plus three that you can use in any of your roles or skills or any of those things you're gonna be doing throughout the game. So it really does benefit you to role play this and get those points for later use in the game. But I love the flavor text on these cards. It really does feel like that role playing, you know, D&D-esque type adventure that you're trying to portray, but in a card board game, you know, you really do get that role playing sense. And those cards are really just a guide to lead you through the process, especially for those maybe you're not familiar with doing role-playing type games, but it does give you lots of freedom. You can do some of your own role-playing just based on what the card is telling you. So you're not just solely tied to it, but it does open up a world of possibilities as you adventure and ex experience the story together, because it really is that. You're experiencing the story as a collective, as a group. So all those different cards you're gonna be referencing for the points of interest, NPCs, things like that, you'll be pulling from this deck. And then you'll be exploring. And during your adventure phase, which there's a tile, and it flips between adventure and combat, adventure is really just free form. You can move and interact. Everybody can kind of position themselves on the map and talk to different NPCs, go into buildings, move off the map into new areas. And as you move off the map, and move into buildings, you'll be referencing those in these tuck boxes. Now, all the tuck boxes, including the cards, are going to have an active deck and an inactive, so to say. So once you've visited an area and done all the things, you can tuck it back behind, keeping track of where you are in the game and so forth. So again, really handy system, really clever and quick and easy to pull the right cards at the right time. I'm sure you're wondering about combat, yes. So let's take a quick look at combat. Now, the thing is you're gonna need some new things for this. You're gonna need the threat combo track and you're gonna need the threat cards. The threat cards are shuffled and put face down. Now, the thing is your enemy will dictate a lot of things how this battle goes as you'd expect. Now, you're going to be drawing threat cards and potentially moving their threat level up on the board based on the card that was drawn and sometimes the card will dictate which enemies attack. So it could be a bosses that only attack this round or it's just the mob level characters or enemies. So lots of different ways those threat cards can take but it definitely keeps the battles dynamic and different every time you engage. And all the enemies have their own special abilities and actions they can perform and a lot of them obviously are going to be using those threat points to do their maximum points of damage and their ultimate best attacks. So you'll be looking at those and the enemies also have a hit card, which this is what's really cool. So there's different patterns that your weapons can perform and some are slashing, some are diagonal, but you'll see all these hit points or these 
points of damage that you do on the enemies. And as you perform those patterns with your weapons, you'd be placing damage markers on the enemy cards to show them where they've been hit. And some enemies have weak points, which will exponentially explode the damage along their different arcs. So it becomes not just a game of battle, roll dice, attack, but it also becomes this really interesting puzzle aspect. How do I best use my weapon in this scenario? And we as a collective, oh man, if you use your arrows and you attack with a diagonal and I attack with a slash, and we can really take this enemy out. Now, one of the interesting things about how the enemy attacks, it's really cool. They are going to be rolling these combat dice, which have patterns on them showing basically the same pattern that you have on your inventory sheet. So this will show where you as the heroes will get hit and you'll be placing markers and so forth to show that and how much damage you're gonna take. So potentially you could protect it, like I said, with a shield and so forth, but all kinds of different ways that that can go based on the dice that are rolled. It's really an interesting aspect, giving them patterns to hit you with as well. And then of course, you as the heroes get to go into combat and attack the enemy. And this is where things become very turn-based and you're using action points. You even have to put like action points on your feet in order to move up to three spaces and close with enemy. And when you do move, you're going to gain combo points, which you again collectively can use for different abilities. Now, the thing is, is that you're going to be attacking, right? So like for my basic sword, I would move one of my action points to there and use that sword. Now, you can see that there's a pattern at the bottom there. And if I roll a two or higher, I'm going to just do the basic one shot, kind of one point of damage. But if I get 11 or higher, then I'm gonna do a full sweeping pattern across, giving me two points there to mark on the enemy's card, placing red crystals in the pattern shown. So you hope to roll well and get your plus one, like here I have a plus one strength, so that will add to the roll as well. And if you have your different points, your role playing points, you could add those here. And that's one of the examples of needing those role playing points. So it's very important to have those at the ready and always actively try to get them when you're doing role playing in the game because it really does aid you and help a lot. So all the different weapons are gonna again have those different patterns. You're trying to roll to get the best value and the ultimate pattern on the enemies. Now, moving back out to the main map, you'll be traveling from hex to hex, and there are travel cards that you'll be pulling as well, and they can have different events and or cause you to flip travel tokens, and based on what tokens are in play, will maybe trigger different effects and things that you will encounter along the way. So traveling can be a dangerous aspect, but you are traveling collectively as a group. It's not, you don't really split up on the main map and so forth. So moving to new areas, doing jobs, trying to fulfill the needs to no longer be the exile. All right, folks, just a reminder once again, this has been a Dice Tower paid preview and everything you've seen here has been in prototype form. So keep a close eye on the campaign for any changes that still may occur. Now, like I said before, this has so much world building in it and the fact that you get to build your character out in the way you want to using your skill tree and everything is recessed, easy for you to keep track of and to save for later game sessions in your tuck boxes and so forth. Lots of upgrades to be had, new items to add to your characters, story to experience as you move through this world and move down into areas, move into buildings and explore them, all kinds of aspects to just make this a huge, really interactive world that you get to be part of and experience with your fellow players. But folks, Ultimately, if this looks like something that would be of interest to you, I'm sure they'd appreciate your support. So I think that's it from me, and until next time, we'll see you at the table.